For this next session, we have Anna Asbury with us. I know she has already led us in worship, uh, but for this afternoon session, uh, it's going to be interview style. We're going to have conversation, and and uh, I'm going to ask some questions uh, uh, for Anna to answer, and then she has uh, just on her heart a, a ministry time that we're going to lead into. Uh, where I'm going to just play piano, and my wife Rachel's going to come back up and, and sing, and Anna will will facilitate that. So we're just really excited for what the Lord is going to do for that. Anna, this is fun. Welcome. Fun. Hi, everybody. I'm super glad to be a part of this True North experience. Yeah, Anna, she has been in this community with, with uh, a lot of us that moved about four years ago, but Culver's and Asbury's, we've been friends for uh, going on. 15 years, uh, and so it's one of the fun things about this uh, event. It's all of our family, and so there's just awesome. such a rich history of just relationship, and uh, Anna, just within our community, obviously, uh, a wife and a mom, but is a creative painter, uh, worship leader, songwriter, prophetic singer, and so it's it's going to be really fun to kind of get an inside look to into her life and just let her speak into a lot. So I'm sure you've been uh, excited to, to be here and been yeah. wondering uh, how I'm going to grill you with these questions. I mean, I'm, I'm a little nervous. Yep. I don't know what you're going to ask me. No, I, do know, I actually do know a couple <laughs> things he's going to ask me. I'm not sure of all of them, but... Uh, as we were talking and preparing for this moment, um, sometimes it's it's fun to just have um, a window into people's lives, and it's hard to express that in a in a teaching or in a preaching moment. And so, you know, Cor- Corey Corey is my husband. <laughs> Caleb and I were just asking and talking with each other on how we could do this the best way, and um, it's so fun to just be interviewed and ask questions. And I just wanna give you guys a vulnerable and honest look into my life, into Corey and I's life, um, and uh, with our kids and our ministry and how we've been doing this for the last 15 years. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool, well, we'll we'll jump right in. So first question, because I feel like a lot of creatives, uh, you know, we we have this, you know, the stereotype of just kind of being all over the place and chasing a million different things. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's kind of this, this, what am I called to? I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do this. And so, yeah, I just want to start, just ask that question, like, what is your calling? And, uh, you know, how did you discover that? Yeah. Um, well, I looked a lot of different places, um, for where I fit. And, some of you may um, <laughs> may actually identify with with some of my story, but when I, I grew up a Christian, I grew up in a in a Christian family, and it was great. Uh, my mom was a worship leader, and my dad was a teacher, and my you know, and my grandmother was a preacher. There was just a lot of ministry, a lot of songs, a lot of singing around us, and um, I just remember. Uh, singing lots of songs to Jesus with my guitar. I was six years old, I remember playing songs and writing songs and just singing to Jesus. And um, people would ask me as I got older, "What do you want to? What do you want to do, Anna? What are you gonna go to? Are you gonna go to college? What are you gonna do with your life?" And I could not find a description for what I felt in my heart that I wanted to do. I just knew I really loved worship, and I loved the arts. And I loved, you know, I was in a ballet company for a while in my teen years and traveling around and uh, doing ballet. And I loved uh, art and I loved, I, I mean, there's just, there, name it in the art world. And I just fell in love with it, but especially worship and um, singing songs to Jesus. And I could not find a description for that. So I would just come up with something and I told people all the time, I'm going to be a teacher. 
And even though inside I was like dying, sorry for all of you that are teachers. <laughs> um, I just, it, it was just a way to get out from their, their question or their yeah. judgment. I, cause I didn't know. And, um, I was about 15 and I was uh, invited to go with my youth group to what was called a one thing conference. And I went, and it was out in Kansas City. And for those of you who don't know, it was the International House of Prayer um, out in Kansas City. And Mike Bickle was was leading this charge, and there was all of these young adults that were there. And my heart just came alive with the worship. Um, Misty Edwards and, you know, there's just a lot of awesome people that came to that conference. And... Um, I remember my heart just coming alive in that moment and me going, I I don't know what they do here, but whatever they do here, I feel like I'm called to do this. So I just needed to graduate high school. So I I got through high school and the first thing I did was I showed up at the One Thing Conference, or not conference, One Thing Internship, um, which actually Caleb happened to be at. (laughs) And, um, And we showed up at the same Thing. And it was there that I discovered for the first time um, that I could be a worshiper, that I could do the arts, that I could do all of these things that are so deeply in my heart and they be just for the audience of God. Mm-hmm. And that that was there was a description for it. And now I have an actual scripture to go with what I felt called to be. But it's, it's the Anna calling. And in Luke 2... Um, it talks about um, Anna, who was in the temple day and night. She was a widow, and that's where she stayed. And she actually ended up meeting Jesus um, while they were on their way to the temple. And it's that's what she did day and night. She was in the temple worshiping Jesus. And um, I feel like that is my main calling. Mm-hmm. I have a lot. There's a lot of things that I do, but that's my main calling is to stand before the Lord and minister before Him. And it's Psalm 27 for, you know, one thing have I desired, that and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and um, just to see the beauty of God. So I would say that that was my main calling. My second being, I'm a mom, <laughs> and I love being a mother. I didn't always love it. It was hard. It's It's been a progression of me falling in love with my calling and my authority as a mother. But I, I love my four kids, and I love the creativity that comes out mm-hmm. with them. And I love being a mother in general in the ministry. Mm-hmm. So let me, let me kind of follow up on that, because you laid out this progression of kind of discovering your calling. And, and you know, when you're 18, that's when the Lord whispers that. Yeah. And, you know, coming out of that, you're in that, but you're kind of young adult. And yeah. you, you know, you don't really have a lot to do with, with your time. And so you kind of, it's easy to just kind of have a single focus, you know, but then a few years later you're married and now kids come along and your calling develops. And now, you know, it seems like there's a tension between, well, I'm, I'm, I'm called to do this, but I'm called to do this too. Yeah. And so, you know, for you now, and those things just pile up, you know, cause yeah. you are like, you're called to be an Anna and you're a wife and you're a mother. Mm-hmm and you're a worship leader, and you're a discipler, and you're a painter. <laughs> and so, you know, these, these things that are all in your heart coming yeah. out, but surely that there's a tension there. And, and so what, is, what did that look like for you? And, you know, is there an unsettledness, or, or uh, what does that look like to walk out all of those callings? Um, there is definitely a tension, um, especially in the beginning of having— I had Gabriel when I was 23. Corey and I were both 23. Um, and— there was this tension of, I still had all of these desires to be in a prayer room, um, to be leading worship, to be uh, leading and teaching. And there's all these desires in my heart and dreams in my heart. And then I had this little infant baby that couldn't live if I didn't give him all of my attention. And I adored him, but the tension was, how do I, how do, I do both? And it was there um, you know, Gabriel, our firstborn, he was such a gift from the Lord because I don't think that I would have ever um, been able to meet God in the in-between and in the mundane 
Mm -hmm. um, had he not come. And it was the mercy, really, it was the mercy of God to bring me into motherhood so that I had to find him in the hidden place. Mm -hmm. And so I had to quickly discover how to meet God outside of a conference, um, outside of a, of a worship session, outside of a prayer room, outside of um, church, you know. I had to find him in the times when I was feeding my baby, the times I was doing laundry. Um, laundry actually has been a great place of encounter with the Lord. <laughs> um, you know, late at night, early in the morning, in the middle of the night when I'm waking up with a baby, mm -hmm. now waking up with four different children, um, I had to discover how to have my activate my calling in my home mm. and with my kids and with my husband. And so that that looked practically like me really having to dive in deep and how to become a friend to the Holy Spirit. Mm. And I would say more than anything else, I had to discover who he was as a person um, because I was like, okay, Holy Spirit, you have swallowed up loneliness. I can't make it to the rooms all the time. I can't make it to all the conferences. I can't make it to every teaching, but you're with me. And I know you swallowed up all the loneliness. You came to do that. So I just started talking to him all the time. And when I couldn't sit down and spend two hours in the Word, I was you know, just grabbing my Bible five minutes or even two minutes or just even 30 seconds before the baby screaming. And I was diving into those scriptures and then the rest of the day, I'm either singing them or I'm talking to the Holy Spirit about them or I'm forgetting about them and then he's reminding me <laughs> of them. And while I'm brushing my teeth, whatever. And I had to activate the calling outside of the space that I thought in my head for so long was the only space it could be. And I, I, re I realized I could bring his presence into my home. I could bring his presence into wherever I was at, in the moments with my kids, on in my car, um, at work, you know, wherever. Um, and that's where the tension started. Just it, every, it, a peace came mm -hmm. through me diving into to really have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, let me just ask kind of a, a you, you hit a little bit, but let me even zoom in a little bit more on the practical. So you, you know, hearing God's voice in the midst of the mundane, but but maybe also amidst like the chaos, like you wake up, you know, to a screaming child and a yeah. baby and to children that there's just kind of nonstop noise. And so you 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 mentioned like stealing away for five minutes, but yeah. you said you're talking to him all the time. I mean, is that are you just looking for windows where you can get away or is there conversation happening even while the noise is happening? What does that look like for you? Um, both. I would say in the middle of the noise, sometimes I'm talking out loud and my kids are like, what are you saying, mom? I'm like, I'm talking to the Holy Spirit. You can either join in or you can ignore me. Um, and other times it's just the inner prayer, my inner prayer life that is in my head and I'm just inside. I'm just saying, God, Holy Spirit, give me strength right now. Give me might right now. I feel weak this morning. I don't feel like I, I feel overwhelmed, whatever. And I'm just asking. I'm praying scripture, honestly, in my head over and over and over again. Um, you know, like Ephesians 3, I'm praying, give me might in my spirit. Give me might in my spirit. Give me strength. Empower me. Let me know the length of width, the depth, and the height of your love. And I'm, I'm literally, throughout the day, I'm, I'm, I'm asking the Holy Spirit for help. And I think that that's become one of my greatest strengths, mm. honestly, is that I know how weak I am and that I cannot get through the day without Him. And um, it's just, it's become, it's become the only way to get through every day. And I also find myself um, more than ever now looking for ways to say thank you. Mm. And when I wake up in the morning, like this morning I looked out the window and I was like, I don't think I've said thank you for that tree. <laughs> and <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just finding how can I just conquer this day with thankfulness? Wow. And when I find myself just starting, even if I don't feel it, you know, the feeling, I think so many times we're led by our feelings, but I'll wake up first in the morning, I may feel like crap <laughs> and not, not good at all. And especially in the days right now that we're living in, that just there's just a ton of noise everywhere. Yeah. And you can wake up feeling that, especially if you go to bed and 
you're filling yourself with that. And so I wake up and I try to just conquer the morning with thankfulness. And it is crazy how the Holy Spirit will just start welling up inside of me and thankfulness then begins to overflow. And then what I see with my eyes, it begins, I start to see everywhere that God's moving in my life and I see his handprints on everything and it, it changes the direction of my day. Hmm. Yeah, let me, let me ask, what's, what is the enemy of that? Like if, if the goal is just this constant communion, you know, abiding yeah. in him, being grafted into the vine. Yeah. And uh, what, what is the enemy of that? Like what pulls you out of that place? Whining. Um, mm. Focusing on the negative. Mm. Um, and that's hard to do, hard, hard not to do, especially if you have a sick baby, especially if you've lost your job. You know, what? the list goes on and on, the big things. But I would say that the thing that steals it more than ever is the complaining mm-hmm. and the and and focusing on those things. Um, and when I find myself, you know, Corey and I, we are we sharpen each other in that, and we can call each other out. You know, in the beginning of our marriage, when we did that, it didn't go over so well, <laughs> but at all. We're, but, we're really good at like you know telling the other spouse to be thankful. Not so good at uh, remembering no. to be thankful ourselves exactly. and receiving it. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> but now we can lead it. One of us will just start. Mm-hmm. Let's let's be thankful. Yeah. One of the things we've started doing with our kids is when we're having a moment and everyone's just losing losing it. Uh, one of the things we'll do is we'll stand up. We're like, okay, everybody get on the chair. If we're in the house or in the car, we're like, okay, we're gonna do we're gonna do five minutes of thankfulness, yeah. and. We'll get the kids up, you know, one of their favorite things. Everybody stand on the chair, and at first they're like, man, I don't want to do it. And they're whining, and they hate it, and we'll get everybody on it. And then we just started screaming out. Everybody say, oh, thank you, God. We just start yelling it, and then we'll go through. And, you know, then they're laughing because it's ridiculous, and they, you know, it's just funny. And then we start saying, what are the things we're thankful for? And they each naming their things. And it will, boom, it will shift everything. So I forget what you asked me, and that's where I Yeah, went. it was what's the enemy, and you just, you know, yeah. hitting that that negativity and just staying in that place. It's yeah. it's crazy how much that does pull us out of just that communion with the Lord, and thankfulness really is the door that we walk through into the court of praise and into the place yes. of faith and gratitude and hope. And yes. I do, I love that, you know, that promise of Psalm 100, it's, it's that the gate is always there. Like yeah. thankfulness is always available. Like I, like I don't have great faith all the time. I don't no. walk around being like, let's pray for the dead to raise right now because I have great faith. Yeah. But I always have access to, to thankfulness. And I love yes. that, that, you know, learning the discipline when everything's going crazy and there's chaos, I always can stop and practice gratitude. And I just, I love that example too of, you know, the, the kids and getting up and having a goofiness, playfulness. Yes. Uh, let me kind of ask you on that, like when you're talking about discipling your kids in that family environment, you know, yeah. I, I know we all want to be careful of just not becoming that, you know, uber religious family where like our kids just kind of hate God yeah. and, and, and hate church and all of it is kind of sterile to them and like, all right, you know, yeah. we don't want to force it on them, but you know, that's not an excuse to not disciple our kids. And so yeah. what, what, what role does playfulness have in discipling our kids? So much. Um, I grew up in a wonderful family, but it was very, very religious. And so I feel like it's taken years to peel back the spirit of religion over my life where I can, I see God that he's smiling and I see my, I see my father that's happy and delighted in me. And so I remind my kids of that a lot. Like I feel like in my language with them and my prayers over them, that's one of the things that I bring into the language and of my prayers and the way that we talk about God. I'm so careful to remind them that He's happy and that mm-hmm. He's smiling at them. The second thing that we would do is, I mean, we do a lot of dancing in our house and a lot of dance parties um, and goofiness. If I feel myself getting, because I can get really serious quick. Actually, both Corey and I can. We're both really passionate but really intense Sometimes we get too intense and we need to loosen it up. And um, 
Corey does tickle fights. I know it seems so simple, but it really does. It brings in a playfulness, and they're always going to remember Daddy as the one that chased him around the house and played hide and seek and tickled, you know, tickle them. Um, I like to do art with the kids. Like my hands right now are covered in spray paint because Rachel and I just did. Uh, we just did a time of art with the kids, and we invited the Holy Spirit to come in, and they get to play while the Holy Spirit's there. We remind them that the Holy Spirit's there and that he's speaking to them. But at the same time, they're getting to use their hands and play and go outside and find yeah. elements to bring into art. And so we do a lot of art. Um, when, the, when the kids are younger, that's a little harder and it can become chaotic and stressful and actually not be helpful in the end. <laughs> but as they get older, that's a really fun way yeah. to do it. And then the other thing that um, I love to read to them um, as many books, I mean, as many books as I can get a hold of that will will spark creativity and imagination, and then we talk about it, and and those conversations from these these books that whether they're they're written by God, you know, people that love God or not, they can be inspired into learning more and about Him through our conversations afterwards. Yeah. So those are a few things yeah, that we do. That's awesome. I can't tell you how many times things got too serious and Corey just started tickling me. It's just, it's happened. <laughs> oh my gosh! Gross. Uh, I'm totally kidding. Just, I just know. to be clear, uh, those haven't happened. So. Rachel anyway. over there giggling in the corner. <laughs> my wife, I can feel her rolling her eyes yes. over there uh, as I told that joke. So, I recently I did a funeral and my fifth line in was a joke. And uh, it didn't land super well, but I have to be me and just throw them in there. You gotta tell everybody the joke now. (laughs) Nah, I'm good, but I will say the family loved it. They told me after, they're like, everyone needed that joke. So uh, you you kind of hit a little bit of, of, you know, bringing the kids in on the art side. But, uh, and you talked a lot about being in this constant uh, conversation with the Lord. But, you know, for yourself and your own creative flow of painting, of writing, of singing, like, um, what does, how does it, uh, how do I want to ask this? Like, how do you stay in the rhythm of constantly creating when you have these other things that yeah. are really important and really time consuming, but yeah. y- you feel that if I'm not creating, then some, some part of me is dying. And so how are you able to, you know, carve out time or what does it, what does that look like to stay in a constant rhythm of creating? That is a really great question. And honestly, I'm really bad at it. <clears throat> I would say that Corey is really great at doing that. And I am really bad at it. But then he helps me. <laughs> but I, the thing that I'm learning, I will just bring you into my current. Because even this week, I'm going, gosh, I've got to do this better. Um, <clears throat> is I look at the week. And if you if you let the week just take over. You will never find time. Mm. All, all the emergencies will yeah. always take over your week. And, um, and you'll never get to the things that you actually want to prioritize in your life. So what, for me, I'm learning. I'm not great at it, but I'm learning to take a day to plan out my week and plan the intentional times with my kids, plan the meals with my husband and plan the date nights, plan the times to connect with friends, but also plan the times where I can sit down and write or I can sit down and paint or, um, and and need it when I need to get a babysitter for three hours. So maybe I can just go to Starbucks and just have some time and get inspired again for some, you know, for me, sometimes that's just grabbing a magazine and going through and just looking at art and pictures, and and then other times it's going out and walking, and I can do that with the kids, and I love to do that. Is just take them out and get out in nature, and that will bring new life into me. Whether it's cold or hot, we can just get out into nature, and that is life. Um, but I would say you've got to plan it out. Um, I know that seems so <laughs> ironic to creativity because you feel like, oh gosh, doesn't it just need to happen? And that could rub a few people wrong. Mm. But for me currently in the place of life that I'm at, and I would say most people, um, it is really important 
to prioritize your time and looking at your week. And if you want to get things done, um, you won't if you are letting life just come and hit you. And because you'll always end up being moved by whatever is happening around you, you won't ever be able to just move on what's actually in your heart that you want to do. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. I want to stay on the theme of uh, art because you know you are an artist. And I want to kind of ask a question that ties a bit into uh, your heart. And because uh, I know for a lot of artists, one of the most difficult part of being an artist is sharing Mm -hmm. you know, a vulnerable part of you. And if it's like something that you feel like God is saying and it's your heart and it's your calling, it's like, it's every part of you. And, and I just, I'm, I'm laughing. <laughs> I don't know if you remember you, you, uh, Anna did this custom uh, piece for Lee, our pastor, uh, uh, his birthday. And he posted it on Instagram. It was a beautiful piece. It had deep meaning. It was <laughs> awesome. And one of the first comments was like, that's art. It looks like, you know, it was like some despairing comment. We all watermarks. suck. That just looks like watermarks. So, I mean, uh, it was so funny, like Corey and Lee and me, all of them were like, let's find this person and just, you know, destroy them. Uh, you know, but a as an artist, like, how do you deal with that? Like when you put your art out there, yeah. you put your heart out there and it's what the Lord is saying. And then people don't understand it. People mm -hmm. belittle it. People make fun of it. Like, yeah. what do you do in that moment? Gosh, there's been a, there's been several of those moments. I remember the first time that I, I did this um sh this show where I was downtown Kalamazoo, and I displayed all of my artwork and I had prints for people to come and receive and or, or come in by, and this artist came up, and he looked at my artwork and he goes, "Gosh, it's good, but I can tell you just started." Oh, jeez. I was like. Uh. <laughs> I was like, okay, I won't run away. Uh. I won't. And then I thought, who are you? You don't know. <laughs> Where's your artwork? <laughs> I don't see you displaying your artwork. <laughs> I just stood my ground and I was like, yeah. And, and, I, and I took it as a moment to go, you know what? Yes, I was feeling all of this commotion inside, but I just responded like, yeah, I haven't been doing it very long, but I'm not going to let that stop me. Mm. Um. So there's that, but that one sticks in my head because I sometimes see that person and I'm like, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless <laughs> you, bless you. Um, but I would say that one of the things that I have uh, so um, learned to make a habit in my life is when I finish a painting or a song, whatever it may be, I ask the father what he thinks about it. And I don't ask anybody else. I don't look around me first to say like, what, what do you, what do you guys think? What do you, what do you, what, how is that? Because I've learned that will only lead to me finding the most negative thing that was said and then just crashing and burning. So I, I stop and I say, Father, what did you think about this? What did you think about that moment? What did you think, what do you think about this painting? And when I hear what he has to say about it, it does not matter what anybody else thinks. Mm -hmm. And I can weather a lot when I know what he thinks. And um, that has kept me going, honestly. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of artists that have stopped because of so much negative. There's just, everybody has a, a, an opinion and they just stopped. And Instead, they should have just kept going, but they needed to hear the Father's opinion. He, they needed to hear how he was rejoicing yeah. over what they created, because he's a creator, and uh, that it's not too much or it's not too little. Or I think that that's the, the the two biggest lies in my head usually are you. That was way too much, Anna. You just you laid it out there too much. You were too much in worship, or mm -hmm. that painting is too much. Mm -hmm. Or on the flip side is you didn't give enough, Anna. That. Like the painting for Pastor Lee was, um, I was like, is it enough? Is it enough? Is it enough? And I, the father was like, this is exactly what I want him to hear and to see right now. This is enough. You are enough. And once I hear that, I'm good to go. I mean, I have to, you know, it doesn't mean that I won't battle some of the negativity, yeah. but I have that as an anchor, you know, as a foundation that I can just rest on. Yeah, that was 
That was so powerful, and I was just even feeling the Holy Spirit as you were talking. We're not we're not done with the interview yet, but I just I felt like you were supposed to just pray. I I just kind of got this picture as you were sharing of artists that have had mm. people come and say things, and that has shut them yeah. down, and they know that they are trapped right now, and they're not releasing the art that's in them because yeah. of that 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 wounding and the and the fear of man. So yeah. would you just would you just yeah, pray totally. for, for those people right now? Father, I just ask right now that your presence would be so thick in every single room, um, every single bedroom or church room or wherever people are watching. And right now, I just ask that the shame from people's words would be broken off. Those words were never meant to do what they have done. And I, I just, right now, I just, I rebuke every lie of the enemy over you in Jesus' name. I release the light of Jesus into every room, into every ear, into every eye. And I release you to create again. You were made to create. And what you've created is beautiful. And what you have to create is beautiful. And I just, right now, I yeah. see a massive, massive room in heaven with masterpieces in it. And God is just waiting to give you these ideas. He's just waiting to release through your hands these, these beautiful masterpieces that will even bring people to believing in Jesus forever. And so right now, I just, I, I do, I rebuke every single lie, every single negative comment that has come against you, every single word curse against you. We break it off right now in the name of Jesus, and I release you to be everything you were made to be. From your mother's womb, you were called to be something great, and, and it is okay to be something great. Some of you have have backed down because you you felt judged by others because they were jealous of your gift. Mm. And, and the most humble thing you could do right now is to admit that you're great and to admit that the gift you have is great. And the most humble and beautiful thing to do now would be to activate that and to use it. You don't have to apologize for your greatness anymore. He's called you from your mother's womb to be great. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Amen. That was awesome. <laughs> That's not a question. It's a statement. <laughs> uh, that kind of leads me into last question. Yeah. Because um, I know that this really aligns with just your heart for journaling. And I know so much of your passion for journaling is not because you're like, oh, journaling is it. Like, that's the thing. It's, it's really a tool for pouring our heart out to the Lord and having him speak yeah. over us. And so, um, you know, you have taught this journaling as a spiritual discipline for years. Like, what does journaling look like for you? And what does it mean to to pour out your heart and have the Lord speak over you? Like, how does that look practically? And, and, and what, how does that, you know, look in your life? Yeah, well, I've done journaling for a really long time, probably since I was 14. I, um, I acquired this gift or this tool, I should say, um, when I went to um, what was called a creative worship camp. And some of you know the Helsers. They sing the song... Um, I'm no longer a slave. And, but their dad, Jonathan Helzer's dad, was the one who taught me how to journal. And he had done it for years. And he had been an alcoholic and in a, in a rock band and done drugs and all this stuff. But the thing that pulled him out was when he began journaling the voice of God back to him. And that was what created a discipline in his life to remain in, in a place of purity and holiness and righteousness and just communion with God. So I learned it back when I was 14. And honestly, it's, it's been this tool that I've, I've used all these years. So I, I wanted to um, both share on that, but I wanted to teach it too. Just a, a, just a really simple way. Yeah. There's, there's lots of ways to journal. Um, you know, some people do it as a diary type and some people, you know, just write out their deepest thoughts. I, all of, all of that is good, but this, this way that I've learned to do it has become 
this compass of turning my heart back to the Lord over and over and over again. Um, so if it's okay, I was gonna show some of my journaling and, um, and then show you, I'm gonna use a Sharpie because I don't know if that's how else to do it without it being bright enough. But what I'll do, okay, so what I'll do, I'm gonna hold it up. This is one of my journal entries from this year actually. And so for those of you who are really nosy, you'll stop and you'll pause and then you'll zoom on my journal that I was sticking right here, okay. <laughs> but I always start, I, everyone can put their own thing. I always start with my date. And on some of my other ones, I, I'll, I'll, if you're really artistic and you like to do things, I usually will, will do a picture, I didn't on this one, um, but of where I'm at. Like, what am I doing? Um, am I in a house or am I somewhere else? Sometimes if I'm at the beach, I'll do waves, just whatever. And I'll put that at the top. So when I go back to look and read my journals, there's like this feeling and this remembrance of where I was at. I didn't on this particular one, but whatever, you get it. Then I, I don't know if you can see, but I put a little coffee cup with steam rising. And it's just like my cozy, like I'm gonna share my heart to God. Now, some people may wanna do something else, but that's how I always recognize throughout my journal, oh, this is my voice. And so on this particular day, I said, Abba, how do you feel about me today? And that was just, I just woke up and that's what I wanted to ask the Father. And a lot of times I call him Abba. And then right here, you can see I put a cross. And on the cross, the cross to me always represents his voice. And then I will just take time and I will write out everything that I'm feeling him say. Um, and then again, I, I, then I'll have my response. Um, and in my response, so I'll read a little bit just so you can get a um, feel for what the father sounds like to me. Um, he'll sound different to everyone. I'm sure Caleb's journals sound very different than mine, but I'm gonna say this, if it's negative, if you hear the Father speaking to you negative, then you probably just need to take a second and, and that's not the Father's voice. The Father's voice always comes in this tender and kind way. Sometimes he, he does yell at me, but it's always still kind. <laughs> yeah, um, so you are my deepest intricate possession. I formed everything about you. You've gone through a lot in the last year, and that I and I knew that you would need lots of help as I healed you. I need you, I knew you would need Corey at home, and your mom near, and your sister near. Don't be afraid of me. I care for you. Don't try and produce or work to transition or to put your heart through needed procedures. I care deeply for you. You need to receive all of my healing. Do not compare. Commit your family and your ways to the Lord, and he will establish them all. I will build your family. Remember that. And so then I, I, I said back to the Lord, let your whisper be like a roar in my ear. And then, I, then the Lord spoke again to me. I'm going to establish your ways. Your need for me is your greatest gift. Please do not be afraid of me. My kindness will make you great. You are my queen and you are royalty the pearl of great price. I'm directing, I'm directing your lives and your steps and see how it comes out of rest. Help me. Oh, this is so, God, I didn't remember this part. Here I am. Help me with the painting for Pastor Lee. <laughs> I'm nervous. I want it to be so perfect. Direct me and give me grace and strength to be guided by you. That was the Lord. I didn't know that was in there. So that's how I map it out. And I, I want us to do it. I want us to take a second. But I want to, um, first, I'm going to just do it in this. Some of you got this book, it's a, or this journal. It's a little bit small. But I just want to, I just want to show you with a, because my writing is a little bit hard to, so usually, so, whoops. So I'll put the date. What's the date of today? It's something. <laughs> nine, let's just say 930. 20. Okay. And you can see I put that and then I'll say where I'm at. I didn't on that journal entry, but right now we're in a loft. So I'll put the loft and then I'll write you guys, whatever you like. 
this is my little coffee cup. So I can do like hot wings or something like that. For yeah, me. whatever <laughs> makes you happy. <laughs> and then this is your voice, okay? So whatever is your deepest, most honest prayer before the Lord. Maybe it's a question like I said. I just needed to be reminded how he felt about me. I just wanted to hear him say, I like you again, and that you're my favorite. And I, I just needed to hear him say he was proud. So I just wrote, Abba, how do you feel about me today? And that's where I started. So you write, it might be a ton, or it might just be a little bit, and that's all you have. Or sometimes when I'm going through a lot, it just might be me saying, help, <laughs> honestly. And then I write the cross. So I can always go back in my journal. And sometimes, you guys, I'll go back and I'll just read. I'll find the little crosses and I'll just read what he said over mm -hmm. and over. And it will bring me back to this place of being grounded and remembering, oh my gosh, he loves me. He likes me. No matter what the storm I'm going through, this is, he's still speaking to me. He's still, you know, he's alive. He's present. So his voice, okay? So we do that. And you can do that over and over as many times. Now, there's one little thing I sometimes do. I do this little cloud. And that's when I have a random thought. And it could be a good thought or it could be random, like um, order pizza for the kids. But that's just a way for me to keep, I get it out, I get it done, and then I go back into whatever I'm doing. Because that sometimes can happen. It could be a good one though. And sometimes if it's a good one, I'll circle it or, you know, whatever. And it could be a good thought. Like, like I liked what I said in this one spot here. Um, see how it all comes out of rest. And remembering for, you know, this was something that he said to me and I could make that a thought that I go back and I could highlight it like everything good comes out of rest. Everything from him comes out of a place of rest. It can't come out of a place of being, going, you know, nuts. So, okay, so that, that is kind of sloppy, but it gives you, it gives you an idea. So, I would like you guys to grab a journal and um, go ahead and I want you to write, thank you, I want you to write your deepest, just your deepest prayer before the Lord. And Caleb and, and Rachel are going to uh, just kind of put us in a devotional type setting where you can receive. Um, yeah, so don't be afraid to hear his voice. It's a little scary at first for those of you who this is the first time. And for those of you who this isn't the first time that you've been doing this a lot, I just, and you think, oh, I've done this before. I, I've heard his voice a million times. That's awesome. But I want you to come to it today like it's the very first time you've ever heard from him. Yeah. So I, I'm going to give you just a little bit. And Rachel is going to just sing some songs prophetically over you or the Father's voice, whatever she's feeling. And just take time to receive and just sit in his presence. And... Um, after they sing a bit, then, then we'll come back and we'll bring it to a close.
some of the deepest questions of your heart that this is going to be like a new awakening in your heart and I feel like even some of you are going to write things asking God how he feels about you things that no one knows maybe that you walked through or or that happened to you and I just feel like he's going to come and he's going to speak to you and you're going to begin to see him in those places of your life that you never could see him before. And it's going to be like, you know, all of a sudden in the morning when you hear the birds singing for the first time and I just see real healing taking place from you hearing your father's voice. Real deep healing taking place. So don't hold back. Don't hold back. This is going to be a moment where it's like peeling back layers and layers. And I just see more and more newness and more and more joy and more and more laughter and more and more peace and rest is happening as you take time to write down these conversations that you're having with God. It's going to be transformative in your life. So go ahead and wrap up. And if you're in a group together, I would encourage some of you, if you feel comfortable, if it's a safe place, to share some of the things that the Lord spoke to you and to even make this a time of ministry within your group and pray over each other, bless each other in the things that the God that God has been speaking. Take those moments and, and speak them over each other. Pray over one another, even if there's healing. I, I just, it's endless. The opportunities, the Holy Spirit's just like hanging on the edge going, will you give me a chance to show up? I want to show up in your in in your room, in your homes. Or if you're at home alone, call a friend and, and tell them what the Father has spoken to you. Speak it out. Even if you have no one around you, speak it out what God has spoken over you, what he's speaking to you, and, and declare it over your life. Don't don't hide it. The more that you get it out, the more you believe it. If you want to, if you sing, if you dance, dance to those thoughts. Create a a painting out of what the Father has spoken over you. We love you guys so much, and we are we are so happy that you have spent this time with us. Bless you.